Hello and welcome to the Reaton Entertainment Podcast, episode 448 for April 21st, 2024. My name is Nathan Reaton Spruth and joining me this week we have Andrew Rowe McFain. Wow, it's me. You're here and uh, our, our good pal Connor could not make it because he is feeling not well right now. Still not feeling well. So hopefully he gets better. He gets like an annual sickness. And uh, thankfully, I figure you work in a hospital like you're going to end up encountering some residual disease. Well, this is no, this is just his yearly like he gets a really bad cold every year because one of his lungs is messed up. Oh, he's mentioned that on the podcast before. So I don't feel bad. I don't remember anything. Yeah, I don't feel bad, you know, violating his HIPAA rights or anything. Uh, not that I would feel bad violating his HIPAA rights anyway, but I, I think it's pretty Pretty common knowledge that he has some medical issues with that. Anyway, uh, hey, Aroa, where can we find you and myself and uh, Connor? Uh, you can go to Aroa.website, which uh, apparently has been broken for a while. Has it? And Yeah, uh, I, none of us realized it. I don't know when it happened exactly, uh, but at some point, I guess, like, the SSL certificate like broke Expired? i don't know I, I i don't remember oh no 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 uh so it was giving an ssl error if you tried to go to it right uh, but that wasn't actually what the problem was the problem was that the a record in dns was pointing to some other ip address and i have no idea what the ip address was it was mine i am th i'm thinking it might have been uh, that tunnel service I was using before. Oh, right. Uh, right, right, right. We, and it just kind of was working up until some point. And I wonder if they kept it working and then eventually, like, automate, like, it automated, like, getting rid of it. Yeah. Like it cleaned up some yeah, stuff in the background. That's definitely what happened. I just don't know when. And so it was like, <laughs> Uh, I, I I got a message from a guy on Steam that I I knew in high school, and he was like, "By the way, whenever I try to go to your website, I'm getting like Cloudflare error." I was like, "What?" And You're like, "Wait a minute, why are you going to my website?" And secondly, <laughs> well, he he started out asking like, "Do you still do podcasts?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, well, "Well, I didn't know because when I go to your website, like." It don't work. I was like, "What do you mean it don't work?" So, interesting. That's fixed. Is that a is now. that a friend that, like somebody I know or just a random guy? Uh, you don't know him. But oh, okay. I I knew him. I I went to high school with him. Yeah, and you also brought. I thought he died in the military. Yeah, but but the site's up now. Yes, yes, it's all good. Good, good. Uh, and then yeah, we might as well talk about it. You you broke everything you broke castapod for a bit well yeah that wasn't my fucking fault that was uh we had we had a power outage for like a second and i don't have a ups on my server because a ups that will power that server for any you know important length of time like more than a minute uh is rather expensive probably be at, i mean you could probably get one that would be okay for a couple of hundred dollars yeah like but well like, it, it I, would I keep also... it up for like 15 minutes maybe maybe yeah it, like i the thing is like i can get i can get like an amazon basics one but a lot of people have complaints about the cheaper ones so i'd yeah. rather get one that's like an apc you know i have i have and... two i have three ups's i have one for each computer that I have, <laughs> and then I have one on my route on my modem, like a really like a a really low, uh, capacity one on my modem, just so that Why like do you have the a internet. Have GPS on your modem. Uh, that that way my internet doesn't go down. Like if there's just a a brief flicker of power, it will still, I still uh, have internet access. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. and it was only like you know. 30 bucks or something like that. I so. guess yeah, you could you could plug your your router and your modem into a power strip and plug it in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sense. Exactly. 
Yeah. But yeah. Give uh, me one so, second. Give it, me one moment here. I have to uh, tell my girlfriend I, I love heard, her. I hope he cuts this out. Nope, not okay. cutting that out. No, I am. I'm going to cut that out. That was at <laughs> five minutes in. Uh, she's my, my girlfriend's leaving for uh, a week to go uh, watch her mom's house while she while her mom goes down to Disneyland. My girlfriend's going to oh, go watch her house. Oh. Okay, so, okay. See, yeah. I thought you were just, like, I thought it was just, like, my girlfriend just got home. Hold on, gotta go tell her I love her. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, it, she's leaving for a while, so. Uh, okay. Which no, means that, I can do that... laundry, which will be great. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so so you updated your server. Or the, a server went down, and then it yeah, ser- corrupted Yeah, server went down. Yeah, so, so it powered back up. And, uh, so I, I, I kind of like, I didn't go into the specifics of, of what went down. Uh, and I, I, I think I, I got some things wrong or at least misleading. Uh, so basically forever back, I, I, I think this was like right after Linux kernel six came out. Uh, I did a full update on my, on my server because it's just, you know, regular update maintenance shit. Uh, but part of that was that it decided that it was going to update the kernel. And the problem is I have an NVIDIA driver that is not compatible with the newest Linux kernel. But I oh. need that NVIDIA driver. Yeah. So every time I do an apt update uh, or apt upgrade or install anything really it goes through the same process of trying to build the kernel headers and everything and then it's like oh wait you have this in- you have this incompatible nvidia driver you're going to need to do something about that and then it gives a failure message and for some stupid reason part of this upgrade process changes your grub config to use the kernel before it builds the init ram fs so that you can actually boot so what was happening was my server was booting it was getting to the welcome to grub screen and going okay i'm gonna boot into debian now and then it goes wait there's nothing to boot Uh, and then it, it kernel panics and then just it just sat there for I'm, like a like half a day, I remember because because uh, you you messaged us and said, "Hey, I'll fix it when I get home." But I th- assume you're yeah, at work. It, yeah, because uh, I I woke up and uh, I I got notifications from uh, the uh, uptime robot that was like, "Hey, all your shit's down," and so I got in or I got in there and was trying to mess with it and. Ran into some other problems because uh, it turns out, uh, so like I've got, a, I've got a, an enterprise server, so it's it has a Dell iDirect thing. Oh yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. I know you, I know you know this, but uh, so I can I can control the operating system on the computer without actually like the operating system working like i can get into the bios and everything yeah it's great from a remote control thing it's it's fantastic uh the thing is if you have any usb devices connected uh the idrac doesn't let you input anything what it for some reason i don't know why i swear this wasn't a problem before but for some stupid reason it was like reading my uh uh my AI accelerator as if it was like an input device or something, and that was overriding the driver for the virtual keyboard and mouse from the iDRAC. So I couldn't actually do anything after the server booted. That's really dumb. Uh we use something called Elo, which is basically the same thing. And uh, I think that's HP's version, isn't it? Yeah, and we haven't had a problem with that. I know. It, did you have to get a license for iDRAC, or was that did that come with the server? That is built into the server. Okay, because I know they like you having to pay for licenses for stuff like that. 
Yeah, if you yeah. if you have an enterprise license that is perpetual and it's attached to the serial number of the of the hardware. Awesome. But you were you were able to fix it by booting into the old I unplugged it. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, I unplug I unplugged the fucking USB thing for one. But then yeah, I I now I need to update my grub config so that it that it actually automatically boots the old kernel but yeah right now we're just booting into i think it's linux kernel 5.10 yeah something like that it it doesn't it's not like a big deal um because like all the other software is updating properly it's just the kernel which like i'm not aware of any major kernel exploits right now yeah so i had a somewhat similar issue where i tried to upgrade from 21H1 for Windows, because my, my secondary computer is Windows. It's I, I don't have the patience to do, <laughs> a, like, <laughs> to, to make that into a Linux server and then try to run all my stuff on it. Like, I already have it set up the way I want. Um, well, for the most part. So I go to upgrade, and it's just like, uh, no, we can't fetch updates right now. You know how Windows does that, where they just stop working with updates? Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I was like, ah. so I went and grabbed because I, I was like, I don't it doesn't really bother me that it's, you know, a bit old. But it, if there's any exploits or anything, whatever, and then it's going to make it harder to upgrade in the future. So I went and grabbed 21H1, just the download and started installing it. And I got it installed. And when I had set up Cloudflare, um, well, Cloudflared which is what allows me to do my server stuff with Jellyfin. Uh, apparently, that stopped working. It just, like, removed all of the Cloudflare stuff I had installed. So I had to go and, that like... That's really weird. Yeah, it, it's like it got rid of the service. Um, and what, would ha what I had set up was that it would just automatically run in the background when I... Boot, rebooted my computer and so i could just go to jellyfin you know and the the website i had set up for it and yeah i would see all my stuff and I'd be like great wonderful uh that stopped working and so i had to like refig reconfigure it and i couldn't get it set up uh to run in the background so now it like pops up a command prompt which isn't a big deal but it pops up a command prompt every time uh, when I reboot my computer and I couldn't get it working with a uh, task scheduler to like, you know, start up when the computer starts up. Uh, so I just put it in the startup folder and <laughs> now, well, no, 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 because of the way it's configured, uh, you know, it has a bunch of dependencies. So I, I didn't put the bat file that I created to run automatically. Uh, I had to create a shortcut to that bat and put that shortcut in the startup folder. Uh, yeah, that's so that's so weird that it, like you tried doing it with task scheduler and it just said no. It just wouldn't it just work. Didn't yeah, it just don't just didn't work. So, but like, there's oh, a bizarre. if you do like Windows colon startup or something like that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, it'll open up that startup thing and you can put pretty much any program you want in there and it'll just automatically start. Um, yeah, and so I just put the the shortcut, and now it works fine. It just a lot of yeah, a lot of like Babby's first malware would drop stuff in there. Yeah, well, and I tried like there's different you know you know this, but there's different like inputs you can put attributes or whatever you can add to the bat file. So I tried like quiet. I tried you know silent. Like all uh, I tried minimize like uh, all of uh, the things to make it so that it wouldn't. Um, I, I can tell you, you can um, you can do it with PowerShell instead. That yeah, uh, that, that if might you work, but if it you do, matter. I think it's like it's like invoke command. There's a flag on that to uh, set the PowerShell window type to oh, uh, hidden. There was another one I tried to do, which was um, echo off, so it would stop, yeah. and that it, it didn't do it. It just would not run with those so it would it would flash the box but then i would go to my site and it would never actually launch so it's actually just not running unless that window's open how bizarre yeah it's weird so i think i just did minimize so it just minimizes it when it starts 
so it's there yeah. all the time, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, let's get to games. What games did you play? Uh, I, did you know that there was a new Clue game? Uh, no, of of course not. <laughs> uh, yeah they they released a sequel to Clue on PC. It it's just called Clue again. Um, I don't know why. Okay. They did that why why they named it that way? But Clue Two Electric uh, Boogaloo. It, it's I think it's I think it's based on like a more modernized because uh, I know they released like a new version of the board game yeah. that has like newer rules that change up the way the game flows. It's actually pretty fun. Um, I like it quite a bit. Uh, it, we got it on sale. It was like seven bucks last night and played it for like an hour and a half you still have like the normal clue rules available to you but this this new mode that they've got is really neat um and makes everything feel a lot more like it feels a lot more like you actually have to kind of logic things out and and make some assumptions and like not so much like a because I feel like the the normal clue rules, if you know what you're doing, it's kind of just a matter of getting to the correct rooms, yeah. And then, and, and from there, as as long as you do everything right, you can usually solve everything within like four or five rounds. Uh, so yeah, that, it's fun. And they like the original was all like 2D graphics. It looked like one of those uh like hidden object games, honestly. Uh, the, the new game has cute little, like, like uh, final gen PS2 graphics. Nice. Like they're, they're kind of stylized. Like they're, they're, it, it looks fine for what it is. And they got cute little animations where they like show your character or whoever you accuse with the, with the weapon attacking Mr. Black. Like it's, it, it, it's all fun. Uh, so yeah, it was a good time. Good. Um also I, I talked a while ago about a game called Death Must Die, which is a, a vampire survivors like. Uh it got a major update uh yesterday <laughs> and it adds skill trees that are sort of set up kind of like wow classic skill trees. Uh that that like completely changes how the game plays in a lot of ways. Uh I feel like that's something that most of these games don't do is is give like each character something that really defines them in in a major way. Like Vampire Survivors itself, it's just like your starting stats are different or like you have a different starting weapon. But outside of that, there's hardly any identity to each individual character. And they had like a perk system uh, originally. And that's been totally wiped out and replaced with this skill tree that is a lot more compelling. So, well, that's uh, good. yeah, it's a really, really good game. Um, and I think that's, I think that's, it. oh, uh, you know how there, you know, there's emulators on iOS now. You know, I almost included that as a story. I almost uh, included that as one of the stories we're going to talk about is that iOS is now allowing emulators. And I know they just came out with a Nintendo emulator. Oh, yeah. yeah. So whenever that initially like come out that like Apple's allowing emulators, I and a lot of other people thought that like people were jumping the gun in reporting that they were going to allow like you just have an NES emulator on the on the uh, Apple store. Like, I, I thought for sure that wasn't going to actually be the case and that what it was really doing was allowing for, like, Sega uh, to put out, like, the Sega, a Sega Classics app that essentially just has, a like, a Sega Genesis emulator, but then you can, like, do in-app purchases to download ROMs because that technically wasn't allowed previously under App Store rules. Oh, okay. Uh but no, uh, I downloaded fucking uh, Delta, which was an app that I had actually paid for uh, a sideloading uh, app store. Uh, a, a guy's uh, 
the, the same guys uh patreon i, I had paid for that for th- just for the purpose of installing delta like a while ago and now you can just get it off the fucking app store and i i was at uh i was at my psychiatrist's office and i i, I got uh fucking pokemon puzzle challenge uh, for the game boy color and was playing that on my iphone and i was like wow i this is like one giant checkbox off of like stuff that makes me want to switch back to android like that i don't i don't need this any, i don't need that anymore yeah I mean, until they I just... until they say no until they stop supporting yeah it. i don't yeah i don't i don't know if like they're going to realize what kind of floodgate they've opened uh, like i don't know I don't but know either. supposedly a couple days ago a, a playstation emulator came out I'm sure there's going to so be. So I'm kind of curious as to what that's going to, how that performs. I'm I'm sure there's going to be a flood of emulators coming out, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came out with a PS2 emulator pretty quickly too, because um, on the Android side they had Aether a- Aether SX2 or whatever, um, yeah. and that actually did ran pretty well until the developer just stopped making it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, part part of what sucks is. Uh, the the app, the app store just has a reputation for people that go on there are fucking stupid, uh, and and it's it, it makes perfect sense. Like you have a ton of of normies that download like whatever from there. And the reason I mention that is that there there have already been malicious, yeah. I, I, I guess not malicious, but just like they're they're open source emulators that people have repackaged with ads built in. And that that kind of shit sucks. Fine, so I'll make not... I'll make an open source emul or I'll find an open source emulator and bake in some ads. <laughs> Got to make well, some that, money. Uh, like uh, that's something I'm I'm really not looking forward to is that there's going to be like a billion fucking emulators that are all essentially just retro arch but with ads baked in. I am gonna so. I'm gonna do that. But it's just going to point at a row it dot website and rate and entertainment dot com. It's not even an actual emulator. Like it just opens a web browser. That's yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It just opens a web browser to a row uh, row dot website. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on to the games I played, which I played some uh, more WWE 2K24. And I did the I'm continuing the My Rise storyline for the female character. And uh, there's a part in the storyline where you like go to like do spooky stuff, and then apparently you get telekinesis. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and, you, and you suck out people's souls, like Shane Sung. Yep. Is this like a dream sequence? Nope. Nope not a not a dream sequence. Just part of the game. <laughs> yep. You get it. You get a a part where you get to choose three different. You have to do each of the storylines, uh, but you get uh-huh. to choose which one you do. And I was like, oh, I'll go with Alexa Bliss's storyline, which apparently you get invaded by a a demon, or there's a demon in an amulet, and then you <laughs> use the powers of the amulet, and then at the end of that, you fight like the monster breaks free out of the amulet, and you and you have a wrestling match against the monster. I love that so fucking much. It's so dumb. <laughs> that is so good. Like that's the that's the kind of shit that like the like obviously they I don't think they ever really went like that direction, but the the stories that I hear about older wrestling and how wacky it was. Like that's the shit that makes me like that. They they had and, a wrestling and... match in like 2020 which was a uh they had like a freaking ad buy basically and sometimes they'll do ad buys where they're like um in they have to be put into the match so there was there was one that was for the new cinnamon toast crunch flavor or like branding (laughs) and so you had this like father son facing off against each other in like this heated blood feud but ray mysterio is coming out like surrounded by boxes of (laughs) fucking cinnamon toast crunch <laughs> and they had another one 
where it was a zombie lumberjack match. And <laughs> so the the monst the like the the lumberjacks outside the you know, do you know what a lumberjack match is? Oh, okay, no. See, okay. I thought so, you were just saying that it was like a no, guy no, no, dressed no. as a lumberjack for no. a zombie. No, so a lumberjack <laughs> match is, you, you know, it's a one-on-one match typically where there are people surrounding the ring and, like, you get thrown out of the ring and those people are supposed to either, you know, throw you back in or, like, beat you up a little bit and then throw you back in. Okay. But the, so those people on the outside are called lumberjacks. And a zombie lumberjack match has zombies on the outside of the ring. <laughs> you get thrown out and then you just get eaten by zombies. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> so the wrestling's stupid. Uh, but yeah, so I played that. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, well, and then I went to another wacky game and I played Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I played some more Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is still really good. Um I I I went through some dungeons and and got over leveled and uh, it's really fun. I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I should be done here in uh, 17 years. Uh, actually, I'm on. I think I'm on chapter 11 and there are 14 chapters, so I'm not that far away. Or I'm on, I just got to chapter 12, something like that. So I should only have a couple more chapters left, which means hopefully next week, but probably the week after I will beat like a dragon infinite wealth and move on to something else. But it is a, it is a really fun game and I'm, I'm not 100 percenting it, but I am doing a lot of the side stuff, which is pretty rare for me in an open world game. So that's how good the game is. What? Why is there a man dressed as Elvis in this zombie lumberjack match? Uh, I would have to see the picture, man. I, f- Oh, that's, that's uh, fine. Yeah. Anyway, uh, are you? Lo- you're looking up the zombie lumberjack match. I. How could I not want to know what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Why are there? They're just zombies in the fucking ring. Yep. What the hell? Yep. It's stupid. It was stu- It was during. It was the pandemic era, uh, where there where there could be no fans. Oh, right. Yeah. So they could just do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had another match. Where it was called an eye for an eye match, where the the goal of, to win the match was to literally take out the other person's eye, and it was <laughs> and it was done with really bad like effects. Anyway, uh, the last game I played on uh, Friday, I played some content warning with Air Fox and uh, our friend Sarah, and uh, it was it's like um, Lethal Company, except you're going in like. Um, exploring. Have you played it? Have you played Content Warning? Yes. Okay. So you're exploring like the old world or whatnot, which has like no color. It sucks. Like I don't like the the fact that it's all gray. But other than that, it's fine. And uh, you're trying to get stuff on camera that is spooky. So like monsters or bones or whatever. And after you do your run, you go back. And you put the tape into the TV, and it uploads it to SpookyTube, and you see how many viewers you get, and you continuously do that until you lose. And we were able to get up to where we needed 325,000 views, and then we all died. And it ruined our run. Like, we, we died a couple times. Uh, if you die, though, I found out that you can actually go get your camera back and still make some views off of that. So that's yes. pretty cool. But it was fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. Had fun playing with Air Fox and Sarah. And uh, we made some some good videos. I did join one group without Air Fox and Sarah, like beforehand. And I was like, oh, these guys are taking this way too seriously. Like, <laughs> the guys were like literally like acting as if they were actually filming something. And I was like, you know, you know it's all fake, right? Like... <laughs> Yeah, but it's more fun that way. It is. It is. I I, I get into. I I was able to get into that like that game like that. Uh, but there was the time we played that Star Trek bridge simulator game, and I started oh, yeah. actually calling you captain, and you're like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Shut up!" I'm getting into <laughs> it. Uh, anyway, we are going to move on, and we're going to talk about some news stories. Uh, first news story that we are going to talk about, not not listed in order is the YouTube is preventing ad-blocking mobile apps from accessing its videos. 
So well, yeah, this is only a matter of time. I yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not shocked. Um, so it says YouTube's war with ad blockers is far from over, and it's focusing on tools that enable ad-free viewing on mobile devices. Uh, this is all from Engadget. The Google-owned video platform has announced that it's strengthening its enforcement on third-party apps that violate its terms of service, specifically ad-blocking apps. And I don't, I, I don't know about you, but I know that like when I used ad-block on on YouTube, it was often like it would the ad blockers would work and then youtube would find a way around the ad blockers and then the ad blockers would work again and then it just it's just a cat and mouse game and i assume that this is probably what's going to happen to this um, oh absolutely yeah but basically it's saying that it won't actually allow you to play videos um, it said back in November, the last paragraph here says back in November, YouTube told us that it launched a global effort to urge viewers with ad blockers to enable uh, or with ad blockers enabled to allow ads on YouTube or try YouTube premium for ad free experience. It started by showing pop ups whenever an ad blocker is in use, telling you that it's against the website's uh, terms of service. Soon after that, you could only play up to three videos with an ad blocker before you can no longer load any videos. Damn. Uh, Google yeah. also later admitted that if you have an ad blocker installed, you may experience suboptimal viewing, such as having to wait a longer period before a video loads. Now, that that is maybe a way to get the um, the ad blockers like removed or, or disabled on YouTube. Uh, because if it takes, it'd be like, okay, if you have an ad blocker, it's going to take a minute to load this video rather than like just not enabling the video at all. And, and that it, might like, that might encourage somebody to be like, fine, I'll just put on the ads and skip the ads when I can. Uh, my, my whole thing. And this is, this is without a doubt, a relatively controversial opinion. Uh, but, but, but my, my opinion is just fucking pay for YouTube if you don't want ads. Yeah. I, I like, I get it. I get that. Like Google does a lot of shitty shit and YouTube probably doesn't need that much money per month. Um, that's a lot of money and I feel, it should be more like, like 10, but yeah, probably. Uh, and like, I th like, there are a lot, a lot of things the, that I could see as arguments, uh, particularly what they did with the YouTube music crew uh, recently. Oh, that yeah. was some fucking bullshit. Um, like, but at the same time, uh, YouTube is literally like a, a they at this point, the level of importance that YouTube has for society as a whole, I feel like is ground like you could argue for youtube to be turned into a public service and i i am like that sounds ridiculous but i really genuinely think that like if if google shut down youtube for whatever reason like maybe because it's literally never been profitable um that society as a whole would have a, a crisis of of like information exchange people and, would be very and, people would be upset like they've done um like there have been times where like facebook has gone down in certain parts of the country and people have called 911 yeah like, people are idiots it, and i i really do think that like youtube would be multi like multiple times worse than that like, probably like it, it maybe it's just because of how much i love youtube and watching youtube but like i really just don't it, there's so much information there that like we can't afford to let it die which and, is terrible yeah. we shouldn't have anything like that owned by a private company but like i don't it, like it's there it, like we're already at that point so they have they, um, just so you know, you, you said pay for YouTube, uh, and I said it should be a little cheaper, but we didn't actually say the price. So it's $14 a month. Yeah. For YouTube. Uh, I, 
I pay, I think 20, it's like 22 95 or something like that because I have the family plan, which I, you are a part of, right? Yes. Yes. I, I am. did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like, it's fucking like, it's great. I, I love, I love being able to play videos in the background on my phone. I love that. I don't have to worry about ads. Uh, I, it, YouTube music isn't great, but it, the it's best nice way, to, yeah, the best way to do it if you can, because you can have what is it four or six family members? I think it's five. Five. Okay, so you can have five family members, and that's twenty two dollars a month. Especially if you can actually get people to pay you the money they owe you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that never ha that never pans out for me. I'm always like, okay, uh, you can be on my plan. You just have to pay me, and then they never pay. Um, or, you know, they forget. They're just like, oh, whatever. Um, I had Google. So I'm, I'm with Google Fi. And uh, I don't know why the hell they canceled it. And they, they discontinued a feature on Google Fi. The stupid feature they canceled was sending an email to the other people on your account to tell them how much money they owe you. <laughs> So, so like ever since, cause it would send an email to, to my friend Ricky, who's on my account and it stopped doing that. And since then he's been very sporadic with paying me. <laughs> so I'm like, what the hell guys? <laughs> like, well, why they can don't, you, they don't want you sharing your account. Apparently. Well, no, they want you sharing your account. You actually get discounts. The more people you have on Google <laughs> Fi. But yeah, it's it's just really dumb that they canceled that particular feature. Um and I'm I'm sure YouTube Premium does not have that feature where it's like, "Hey, you owe Aroa $2.50 <laughs> for the YouTube Premium." No. no and and like it's it's only $14 a month though. Like yeah. I get it that that's a lot for some people, but I, a lot of people pay for Spotify premium. A lot of people pay for fucking DoorDash. Can I, can premium, I premium, whatever the hell that is. Can I, can I, uh, door. I can't even remember dash pass. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never done dash pass cause I don't use it enough, nor do I care. Um, I do get, I do pay for Spotify though. Um, and I found out Spotify has audiobooks. They have, they have audiobooks now that you can listen to. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, great, because uh, I've run out of podcasts to listen to quite often because I have like a few podcasts I listen to, but then my boss will make me drive four and a half hours one way for work, and then I have to drive back. And so I was like, I need something to listen to. Uh, so I, I started an audiobook. Turns out it's only 15 hours a month. Oh, yeah. And then it's I like know that. it's like another twelve dollars a month if you want to add ten more hours of listening time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I like got to the end of the time and it just wouldn't load an episode. I'm like, what the heck? And I got an email that said you've used up your listening time for audiobooks. Uh, and I was like, Great, perfect. How much wonderful. Is, Thank you. How much is Audible? I don't know, but that's, I was honestly thinking about it, but I'm not going to listen to that many audiobooks. I'm, I'm not a huge audiobook well, the, listener. The reason that I ask is that Audible, I want to say it's like 10 bucks. I could be wrong. Yeah. And but then you, you get only like a, get the one audiobook a month. Yeah. Uh, but and do you like, get to keep your it, old audiobooks though? You do that. Okay. That is a fair point. You do get to keep your old ones because that's I got I, I think I. I either got a free trial, I probably got a free trial. Um, I don't remember, but in any case, uh, that was how I listened to the Steve Jobs biography. OK, was because of, I, I got the the token and then like eventually was like, oh, yeah. I kind of want to. I kind of want to read that, but I'm not going to because I hate reading. Okay. And I was like, oh yeah, I have a token. So. See, and I'm I'm the other way. I I like reading, and I think of audiobooks as cheating. <laughs> and so, like, I and and I also have a really terrible attention span. So, like, I'll just like start zoning out and be like, ah, shit, I missed that chapter. 
Um, but it, it, I wanted the, the the one thing I was like, okay, audiobooks are are on this device now or are on Spotify, and I had watched through all of American Gods, but they they end off they end off on like the last couple chapters of American Gods, and they never then they're never gonna finish it uh, for the TV show. And so I was like, I can at least figure out, like, know what happens in the book. And I'm not going to spend the time to sit down and actually read the book. So I'll just listen to the audiobook on Spotify while I'm driving yeah. for work. Um, anyway, uh, before we leave this, this uh, section or this segment, uh, I would like to tell, tell you Audible Plus is you get a free 30 day trial, uh, it's $7.95 a month. And it says okay. uh, you can listen to all well, listen to all you want on a selection of included originals, audiobooks, sleep tracks, meditation programs, and podcasts. But there's Audible Premium Plus, which gives you a 30 day trial, it's fifteen dollars a month. Uh, you uh, get all of the other stuff plus you get the title per month. I see. So well, the uh, the which, the reason I mentioned though is like it, you'd have to compare like how how much or how long is an audiobook yeah and like versus do you want to pay fifteen dollars a month and be guaranteed to finish one book or twelve dollars and finish however many books will fit within ten hours i guess yeah yeah i don't i i i mean i don't know i probably just yeah if you're choosing between the two uh i i don't listen to that many audiobooks so spotify is fine with me and I just waited yeah. until my plan rolled over and I finished up the book like two days ago. Uh, good book. Uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman's a, a good writer. Gaiman? 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 I, th I think it's Gaiman. I think it's Gaiman. Uh, anyway, we are going to move on to the next story, which everyone's going to love. It's Fortnite. We, we love okay. Fortnite. Uh, all of their plans have been leaked. For like Heck. 2024. Um, and... A lot of the plans are dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's not really all that exciting, like at all. No. Uh, so we've got there. They've thankfully Destructoid here has uh, broken it down into sections. We got the battle royale mode. Uh, they're coming out with the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover, which is uh, I mean, you get to play as Jack Sparrow. That'd be cool, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, Fortnite OG Chapter Two season. So. You pr do you understand what that means? No. It, uh, so I assume that it's like a rerun of content from the original chapter two of Fortnite. Oh, I see. I see. So they're going to bring back some old stuff to. Uh, yeah. If, in case people didn't get to play it before. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because like, cause I, I like I since I played Fortnite like right when it came out i have some cosmetics that are labeled like fortnite og oh i see, so I see. and then they're yeah. also doing a marvel's doctor doom crossover which i'm sure durga okay. would like he loves doctor doom are Did they it... making like a doctor doom movie or yes oh. i'm pretty sure they're making a doctor doom movie or like a a fantastic four movie um let me well, just see it seems weird that they would single out dr doom if they were doing fantastic four yeah um yes marvel studios has announced that there's a fantastic four movie will be released in july 2025 and dr doom is expected to have a minor appearance in the film and a minor appearance uh, in fantastic four in the apparently okay all right yep and then they have the Fortnite festival which is the music one the the you know that it's amazing rock band. One. Yeah, the the less good rock band. Yeah. Um, they have season three. It's Billie Eilish. Yep. Uh, so that's season three. They have season four is going to be Metallica. Which, uh, you know, okay. I, I like some Metallica and, and songs. Uh, I sure hope they have uh the entirety of Saint Anger. Yes. As as a song choice. I have. I like their Black album better. But anyway, um. Season five. Uh, is... The joke is that everyone hates Saint Anger. Oh, okay. Uh, season... I like it, but I know some people who really like a couple of the songs on there, and then everything else they don't like. Uh, and then 
do you know who this person is? I have no idea who Carol G is. I have is. not even the slightest idea who this is. And I'm assuming it's either a pop star or like a singer songwriter or something. Something like Latin that. And then, pop reggaeton, according to Wikipedia. And then season six, uh, everyone's favorite rock band, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I mean, what? How are you going to put. I... What? Snoop, it's Snoop like, Dogg. How is that going to work? Okay. They I have. Guess... They, I mean, they had. Um, Beastie Boys in one of the rock bands, and let me tell you, the the uh, the vocals on that were not very difficult. No, it was, and by like, not very I, difficult, I mean they didn't have any notes for you to sing. Right, because it's rapping. Yeah. That's not even. I'm not. I'm not even talking like how's it going to work in terms of like gameplay wise, because like they have other hip hop songs on the yeah. on the soundtrack already. I'm more of like, don't, does does Snoop Dogg have a song where he doesn't say the N-word? Oh, oh, right. <laughs> and like, like they have curse words in some of the songs. They they have the fucking, they have the, the part in Down With The Sickness that everyone cuts out, which is really surprising. That's, that's um, nice. But like... It's just, it, I don't know, for, for being like a like a T for teen or E for everyone game, like... That's fun. That's an uh, interesting choice. And then we have Lego Fortnite, which is going to have uh, Star Wars Star Destroyer, I, I guess. And what it, the... Uh, huh? How yep, does you're, that... You're going to play as a Star Destroyer. Are they going to, like, add flying machines? Because that actually sounds badass. That does sound cool, but I have no idea. And then they have Clombo, which I I don't know what that is. Made up thing. What? It is. Oh, I looked it up. It's a. It's an animal. Uh-uh. It's a. It's a. It's an animal like that's like a lizard thing, with sharp teeth. Oh. Okay. Did you Did you look it up? Did you Google it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess it's like it's something that was in Fortnite previously. Okay. Interesting. I see now. And then for rocket racing, which is this is this like a Rocket League thing? No, it's it's just racing. Like okay. it, it is it, it's like it's like if they took the the driving mechanics of Rocket League and just put it into an actual racing game. Okay. And for rocket racing, they're they're gonna have a volcano theme season and a futuristic theme season, and that's it. Okay. So, uh, cool. you know what they should do is put in a Mario Kart themed season because that's what the game actually needs is like power ups and stuff. Because otherwise, it's just kind of boring. I I figured. And then uh, there's nothing else. That's that's all the leaks that they have for this year for for Fortnite, which I'm sure Fortnite players will love some of those. And uh, I, I still think that the music, uh, what is it, Fortnite Festival, definitely needs some work and uh, all of the music from Rock Band 4 brought over. <laughs> Just all of it. Why, why 4 specifically? Was that the new, that, was that the new one? The the newest one? Oh, you mean, you mean like you just want the entire Rock Band library? Yes. Okay. You, you need I to thought, be able to access it. Meant... I thought you meant specifically the soundtrack that was built into Rock Band 4. No, the, <laughs> the like, default for Rock Band 4. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, like, just, okay. just all of the music from Rock Band needs to be ported over because there's, no, there's no real it reason is, not to. Yeah, it is kind of surprising that they're rolling stuff out as slowly as they are, considering that they have such a back catalog and like the only thing that they really have to rechart is the vocals. And I, I and I assume it has to do with, um, I assume that that it would have to do with like licensing and stuff too, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a, I, even of just a bunch of indie bands that they have on a lot of the rock band stuff. Like I'm sure that they could go up to some of those like people and be like, Hey, can we, uh, can we use this indie music and, in- Fortnite festival and they're they're gonna be like uh okay sure whatever yeah it it would be it would be really cool to have a 
like a, a slowly growing list of songs that are always available that you don't have to pay extra for mm -hmm. that are from like internal harmonics bands or like, cause like, like, uh, way back when har harmonics had a thing where they always included us uh, at least one song from freeze pop. Yeah. Uh, and, there, and the, like, there's a band that I really like called Seamus, uh, back in the day from harmonics that they don't exist anymore. Um, but one of the guys worked, was working on rock band and they're like, I guess they were like, whoever has a band, <laughs> we'll put you in. Yeah. And so they, yeah, uh, they did that. All the, all the bonus tracks in the first couple of guitar heroes, the, all, almost all of those were internal harmonics bands. Yeah. Like, and the, it like, just fucking bring those back. It would be so fucking great. And, and like, so what if? nobody plays them like they're just free and they're just just put them in the game i don't exactly. get it but. i don't i don't get it either so uh we're gonna move on though and we're gonna talk about the nintendo world and the indie world showcase and i was gearing up to not have a lot of talk not ha to have a lot of to not talk about a lot of stuff this week because there wasn't, wasn't a lot of stories we had mentioned before we started the podcast but then uh we started talking a lot and so I was gearing up to like actually talk about the whole showcase, but uh, we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to look at some of the games and we'll, we'll talk about some of them. Are there any ones that you, stood out to you? Did you watch the showcase? Uh, nope. I didn't even know what happened. Uh, that said, I already knew about Anton Blast. Okay. Uh, that was announced around the time that Pizza Tower was still building hype. And it looks great. Um, it it's a lot more Wario Land like than Pizza Tower, even. Uh, and it takes a lot of inspiration from the Virtual Boy game, funnily enough. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, I'm not going to play it on Switch, but, you know, I'm not going to play anything on Switch uh, probably ever again. So. Yeah. So there are uh, there, there's a few that I want. So Anton Blast apparently there is a demo out right now. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I wonder if it's on other platforms. But um, it is. Uh, I believe also, in the in the trailer they said that the game is going to be ex a timed exclusive on Switch. Oh, I, I just meant the demo, but I guess that that probably means no. Yeah. Um, but I I am also very interested in Steam World Heist too. Yes, I was gonna. Uh, because... I was gonna mention that because I know you had spoken before about playing Steam World games. Yeah, and I particularly liked Steam World Heist. I didn't play a ton of it, uh, mainly just because it, you know, it's one of those things. But I really liked what I played because uh, it's essentially like two D XCOM. Yeah, um, I was gonna say it. The note I took on it is it looks like a tactical adventure game where the combat looks similar to Worms. Yeah, that that's actually a very apt comparison. It's like, yeah, it's it's very, very Wormsy. Um, and, and like, obviously, you've got the, the steampunk robot thing going on. Uh, I'm watching the trailer without sound right now, so I don't know if they got Steam Powered Giraffe back, but I'm hoping that they did. I don't know. It, I also noted... Uh, it it looks like the ship control is better than in Skull and Bones. Well, that's a... Uh, yeah, they did have Steam Powered Giraffe back. Cool. I don't know what that is, but cool. Uh, they're, they, uh, <laughs> they're a band. Oh, okay. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Blast is one I wanted to talk about, which is a roguelike fighter game uh, with up to four players, and uh, it, it looks... It's in the, the guise of, like, Hades. So it's that type of view where you're isometric and running around and doing combos and stuff. But you can play with up to four people, uh, each playing a different turtle, which actually looks kind of fun. If you uh, that was that was Splintered Fate. Oh, by the way, is it Splintered you Fate? Splint yes. Is that? Give me just a second here. Give me just a moment. I want to see something. Uh, <laughs> because I, I could. You're 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 right. I know it. But I want to see if, yep, you're right. I just wrote it down wrong. 
I, 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 okay. It's Splintered Fate. Oh, it's from Super Evil Megacorp. I forgot that they, like, I, I thought they fucking closed up shop. That's cool. I'm glad I they're don't, still around. I don't know who they are, but cool. Um, and that's, I mean, there's, there's a couple other ones. Like, Europa looks fine, but it doesn't look like it has any combat. Um, there's a couple cat games. There's Little Kitty Big City, where you play as a cat in a city. And there's another one called yeah. Cat Quest 3. Uh, which is a, it's like an action RPG, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a, yeah. And it, I noted the cat cat quest has been long running. Yeah, and I noted the the ship player the ship gameplay looks better than Skull and Bones. <laughs> it's an, <laughs> another one. Um, and and yeah, there was a there were a lot of other games that were mentioned. Um, that you know, some of them look good, some of them look like games I won't play, like Duck Detective, the Secret Salami. Um, you you play as a duck detective solving cases. I wonder if that's related to Frog Detective. Maybe. Uh, but it's they're, they they look good. They look good. Europa. Um, I mentioned that for just a second, but like it it's got some good looks. But like, I feel a lot of it the 3D not. platformers are like they've just been Breath of the Wild for the last like eight years. Because they're just well, like, oh, that's it's... the standard now, I guess. Yep. So it's like all of them have to have water, water uh, color style art. All of them have to have like gliding, like some sort of glider, and uh, all of them play pretty much the same, which is fine. But you know, there's not much creativity there when it comes to and like the way that you're platforming. Every every action RPG for a long while was Diablo. Yeah, like, yeah, it sucks. But yeah, go watch. When you so, have a really good formula, everyone wants to copy it. Exactly. In the in the description below, you'll see the link to the Destructoid article. Um, they only have a couple trailers. Oh, I thought they would have like all the trailers like listed out, but nope. They only have a couple of the trailers, and so if you want to watch all of the trailers, you have to click on the top video, which is the whole thing, uh, which is the whole oh, showcase. Uh... What Lorelei and the Laser Eyes is from the devs of Year Walk, uh, which is a really fucking interesting artsy game. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this this looks like a really fun uh, sort of puzzle game. Yeah, see, I looked at it and I was like, I don't think I would play that. But there's also a weird. I did one. not know that they made Sayonara Wild Hearts because that game didn't look interesting at all. There's another one called uh, Refine, uh, Refined Self, where you play as a robot whose like, owner died, and you're, it's a personality test game. I, I have seen a few of those, actually, which is weird. Like, it, it's such a strange like, combination of, or, or not combination, but, but a, a strange like trend that I've seen lately where games want to like give you a fucking uh, psychoanalysis while you're playing. Yeah. And at the end of the I, game, I'm I, interested where that goes. Yeah. At the end of the game, they'll be like, Oh, you're a, a mechanic or a trader or a soldier or something like that based on the interactions you have within the game. Yeah. Which is, or you're a sociopath. Yeah. You're, you're a drifter. You you did not move for 20, 23 hours and just stayed on that couch. You are a <laughs> you're a couch potato. Um, but yes, so that was the uh, partially the indie showcase. There were, I mean, there were a few games that I'm interested in, but again, like you, I'm probably not playing those on the Switch. Nope. Um, I haven't loaded up my Switch in a long time. Uh, I'll probably it, I I would be surprised if I even get a Switch two when it comes out. I, I won't. I'm, why not? I'm done with Nintendo. Oh, you're done with Nintendo because of all the yeah. DMCA takedowns and stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I am fed up with them and they can go fuck themselves. They don't they the the entire Switch generation they had like two games that were like, wow, I gotta play that. And And both of them were it, Zelda. It's like uh yeah, to some degree. Yeah. I mean, I, I, th I think I think Mario Odyssey was really, really, really good. But like, yeah, I think Breath of the Wild was like was like the one 
thing that was like worth buying the console for. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it like, I, I feel like I'm not losing much and I would rather stand by my principles that Nintendo is a bad company. That makes and sense. And I genuinely think that I think that they are a bad company. All right. So I, I guess all that's left to say is go fuck yourself, Nintendo. <laughs>